Alright, so welcome you guys to the new and improved C2P, or controller to peripheral. Um, I'm not going to go through in detail of everything that this program can do. Uh, I'll explain why that is, but real quick I'm going to show you what we have. So if we launch the program here, we're going to see a new window. Uh, you have a couple new things from the older version. Um, first things first, you're going to want to enable one of the two modes. Enabling game mode will make it so whenever you want, you can use your controller as it's intended to be used. So when you're playing a video game or anything, you're going to want game mode enabled. That way, all these actions and commands that we have this program to use won't interfere. And the neat thing is, while in game mode, if you hit start and select together, it'll enable your peripheral device mode. Um, you can alternatively press that again, and it'll go back to game mode. Uh, there's a five second delay after you enable a peripheral device before you can start using commands. That way it doesn't interfere with it at all. Alright, so real quick, uh, I'm going to show you a couple things. In profile selection, new mode, we have profile 1 and profile 2. Keyboard slash mouse combo, that's pretty much if you're wanting to do, if you're pretty much sitting at your computer, you can do whatever you want with it. I'm going to go ahead and enable that one. It's going to tell me that the profile selection was complete, no errors or anything. I'm not going to go through all the keys and the buttons, what they do and everything. You can find that in images. Back out real quick. Images. And then key map for profile one. All your, all the keys are labeled for what they do and everything. But just real quick, you can move the mouse with either the left or the right analog. Um, you can adjust the mouse speed for the left analog to whatever you want, so we can go really slow if we want to tune in everything really finely. Uh, the right analog you can adjust, only the left one. So the right analog can be for like getting really far across the screen, and then you can use the left one to tune in what you want. But you can adjust that to whatever speed you want, so you can only use that one if you want, it's your choice. Um, the one thing I will explain on the keyboard slash mouse profile, profile number one, is the letter system. I like to be able to sit like on a couch or anything and use my controller as a keyboard and mouse and not having to use that at all. So what I want to be able to do is type with that. Um, what you can do is your R2 trigger will cycle through the letters on a keyboard and the numbers. Um, so let's say we want to type out an K. We define K, then we hit the L2 trigger, left trigger, and it'll print that on there. So now let's say we want an A, we press that again. If you are scrolling through here and you miss one, so say you want a G but you accidentally go to H, you can hit the triangle button and it'll go back one. So now we have the G again and we can pre press that. Like I said, I'm not going to go through all the keys. Um, all of them can be found in the images. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go through the second profile now, the browser. That's the new one. Um, on this one, it only uses a left as a mouse. There is no right analog for the mouse speed. That's specifically for browser now. Okay, so left analog moves through things. The right analog will be a scroll wheel, so pressing down will scroll down, pressing up will scroll up, and not a lot of websites do this anymore, but if it's too far left or right, you can hit the left or the right analog, and it'll scroll to the left or the right, according to whichever one you want to do. Alright, uh, the triangle button is going to open whatever you have hovered over in a new link. So I click that and it's going to open my website. The circle button is going to close your current tab. So if you go here and you hit circle, it's going to close that tab. Uh, the X button goes to the top of the page. So if you're at the bottom, you want to go back up to the top, hit the X button. And the square button is for selecting things. So you press it, you select what you want, you press it again, then you can move over to that right click with your controller still because all this can be done with your controller. So I'm gonna go here, I press square, I wanna copy that, I press square again, 
I move back over to this area. I'm going to hit R2, R1, which is right click. Then I'm going to go copy, and I'm hit R L1, which is paste. Okay, so that's what that can do. Um, the D pad, as you can see, it says it on this image here. It's going to say the same. So up on D pad it will refresh your page. Left on the D pad will go back on the browser. Down will open a completely new page. And right will go browser forward. So it'll go forward in the page. The newer thing on this is R2 is going to cycle between there are four preset ones. You can add them in, but I would only advise people who know what they're doing to do that. It's not that complicated, but you could mess something up if you type something in wrong. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit in the readme file that you can download with it. But I'll show you what that is. R2 is going to cycle through websites. So we have Google, Facebook, Gmail, and YouTube. That's the only four preset ones. So you can cycle through those as many times you want. So let's say you want to go to YouTube, you don't want to have to type that in or anything like that. You find it and then you hit L2 and that's going to launch your YouTube in your default browser. So we'll close that. We'll say we're going to go Google R2 once, then L2. And there we go. We have Google. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or anything. If yours doesn't work, if your controller doesn't work with this, uh, please let me know at tf 2 profit Dot, at gmail.com uh, you can find all this information on my website and the readme um, but yeah thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy